Welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Alan Redimiro, a director at Standard & Poor's Corporate and Infrastructure Writings Group in Asia. We're here today to discuss the recent power outage in India, which affected a large portion of the country. I'm joined here uh, in Singapore today with, uh, by Rajiv Vishwanathan. Uh, he's an associate in our corporate and infrastructure writings group who covers the, the Indian power sector. Welcome, Rajiv. Hi, Alan. Now, this massive power outage in India that we, we've witnessed over the last few days affected 20 out of the 28 Indian states and leaving an estimated 600 million people without electricity. Now, in what could be the possible cause of this failure of this magnitude in your view? Um, the, the blackout actually affected three of the five major grids in India. So it, it affected the north, northern grid, the eastern grid, and the northeastern grid. Effectively, these grids are all interconnected, which means that power is transmitted across these instantaneously. That also means that any imbalance in one of the grids causes a trip, a cascading trip across the system. Now, if you overlay that with the demand in India, the mm. state of infrastructure and the problems really come to the forefront because India has a, an energy deficit of about 10%, 11%, and a peak, peak deficit about 13%, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Now, that means if the demand in a particular area is very high, then it draws more power from the system than is available and the grid can carry. So essentially what we observe is excessive demand growth with generation transmission and distribution really trying to play catch up. From what you're saying, Rajiv, it sounds like this is an incident that is waiting to happen, uh, rooted in the lack of investment in an essential infrastructure. That's, that's correct. Um, if you look at it, the generation, uh, the generation side of it has been really plagued by issues around land acquisition, environmental clearances, and more recently, the fuel supply concerns have really skyrocketed. Um, so this is deterring a lot of investments mm -hmm. from the private sector as well uh, to set up more installed capacity to meet that huge demand in India. If you look at the transmission and distribution systems, they have been in place for a long time. They have been operational. And the last such inc incident was reported about 10 years ago. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not free of problems because it's been managed through rolling blackouts, the stability of the system. And that's not really the most optimal, ma optimal manner of operation. Mm -hmm. I think the issue really comes down to the state of uh, finances at the state utility boards because often political resistance has hampered the efforts of generation companies to fully pass through the increased costs. Also, the gap between revenues and expenses of the state utilities has grown so much that the losses have gone up. So effectively, this really leaves lesser amount in funds to invest in increasing the power capacity on the generation side and improving the transmission and distribution sector. So Rajiv, in your view, what lessons can be learned from, from this incident? Well, in our view, I think the opportunities in the power sector are massive. Uh, there's a huge positive primarily driven by the demand for power in India, the low level of consumption, and the targets that the government has set for eco economic growth. Now, on the demand side, it really calls for an increase in the power generation capacity in India mm -hmm. um, for stable and predictable uh, availability of power um, and improvement in the transmission and distribution sector, particularly at the state level, is important. But I think all of this really relies on the strength of the distribution sector, which is further downstream, because a, st a stable well-operating distribution sector, which is also well-regulated, will enable predictable pricing for power. Now, that will allow generation companies to fully pass through the costs of power. And for, gener for the distribution companies themselves, as their finances improve, it will allow them to invest more in improving the state of the transmission and distribution systems. Thank you, Rajiv, for your thoughts. Thank you, Alan. For more insights on Standard & Poor's outlook on India's infrastructure,
please click on the related content tab on the right hand screen. Thank you and we'll see you next time.